Someone's turned out the light. Oh, Inspector Harrigan has been killed. Just as I predicted. I will now reveal the murderer. The murderer is... I married Jo. What a girl, what a world, what a light. Oh, I married Jo. What a mind, love is blind, what a white. Joan Davis. With Jim Backer. In I married Jo. Well, Dr. Johnson, what brings you here? Not getting a divorce, I hope. No, Judge Stevens. You know, I don't approve of divorce, and especially in my case. You see, I'm not married. <laughs> you approve of marriage, I hope. Again, not being married, yes. Well, then what does bring you here? Well, as you know, I'm the moderator of the television forum, America Speaks. Oh, yes, that's a fine program. Thank you. Brad, uh, how about you appearing on it? Me? Certainly. You're a prominent man, a fine speaker, and the subject of our forum, the need for alert citizenship in the fight against crime, is one which I know you feel very strongly about. Yes, yes, of course, Doctor, yes. Fine. Then uh, I can expect you and Mrs. Stevens at the station tomorrow night at 8? We'll be there. Mrs. Stevens? Why, yes. <laughs> you see, uh, our television audience enjoys meeting the wives of prominent men. Now... Last week, we had uh, Professor Langdon, but his wife was the big hit. Uh, Professor Langdon's wife? Yes, Mary Langdon. You know her, the atomic uh, scientist? Oh, yes, yes, of, of course I do. But you see, Dr. Joan isn't exactly that type. She's more of an atomic housewife. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, I'm sure that she has a point of view. Uh, yes, I only wish I knew what it was. But uh, Dr. Johnson, you see, Joan would love to, but I'm afraid she doesn't know too much about the subject. Oh, nonsense. Now, any woman who's been the wife of a judge as long as she has must know something about crime and its cause. And besides... She has between now and tomorrow night to do some research on the matter. Yes, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> well, I've got you all together because someone in this room murdered Amelia Bancroft. Stop looking at me like that, Inspector Harrigan. I didn't do it. Joni, Joni, will you turn that thing off so we can get some sleep? What makes you think I think you did it? I'm only doing it for you, dear. Well, you... Oh, I didn't. I didn't. I'm not even mentioned in her will. Aha. Uh -huh. Then you did have a motive. Revenge. Come on, I'm taking you downtown. No, no, no. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Look, Joni, I know you want to be a credit to me. I know that you want to make a good impression on the farm tomorrow night, and I appreciate it. But you're not going to learn a thing about credit from this program or a dozen other programs that you've listened to tonight. Now start talking, or I'm booking you in, lady. Look, the window. <laughs> it's the twilight. Look, I've got a full calendar tomorrow. We have to be at the forum tomorrow night. Don't anybody move. <laughs> we got to get some sleep, honey. Yes, I am Mr. Twilight, the avenger of all crimes. <laughs> and I am here to avenge the murder of Amelia Bancroft. Because I, and I alone, know the identity of the murderer. <laughs> the lights! Someone turned out the lights! Inspector Harrigan has been killed. Just as I predicted. I will now reveal the murderer. The murderer is... the same person who just killed Inspector Harrigan. Well, speak up, man. Don't mumble. Don't mumble. Look, will you get that thing out of here? And that person is... Well, speak up. Who was it? Who killed Amelia? Who... Joni, Joni. Joni, dear. It's disconnected. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard another thrilling episode in my series, The Adventures of Mr. Twilight. Tune in again next week when I... Darn it. Now I'll never know who killed Amelia Bancroft. Well, in another minute, believe me, I would have. Now, will you go to bed and get some sleep? Yes, sir. All right, honey. Gee. Good night, honey. Good night, lover. <laughs> Louis! Louis! 
Where? Who? <laughs> That's who killed Amelia. No, he had an alibi. He was in Chicago. Lucky Louie. Joan, huh? Maybe. Good night, dear. Rocky! Oh, Joan, honey, please! No, he didn't have a motive. Maybe he didn't have one, but I'm getting one. Good night, dear. Good night, lover. <laughs> it could have been Inspector Harrigan. Inspector Harrigan was killed himself. Oh, he does have an alibi, doesn't he? <laughs> Good night, Good night. You know, it, uh, it could have been Louie. Oh, no. He was in Chicago at the time. How are you going to explain that? Yeah, he could have taken the plane back. No, that was the night of the big storm. All the planes were grounded. Yeah, I knew, but the train was met by the... Now, look, Joan, you've got me doing this. It's utterly ridiculous. We will both be blithering idiots tomorrow night at the point if we don't get, get some sleep. Well, I, I can't sleep, honey. I keep wondering who killed Amelia. I know. Betty Cosgrove next door. Betty Cosgrove killed Amelia. Oh, no. She and Frank listen to all the mystery shows. She'll know who did it. I know, honey, what's on your mind. Go ahead. Get it over with. Call Betty so we can get some sleep. <laughs> Betty'll know. Yes, of course. Hello, Betty. Uh, Joan. Oh, I'm sorry that I woke you up, dear. Uh, say, you listen to that Mr. Twilight uh, radio mystery program, don't you? You never miss it, huh? Oh, until tonight? <laughs> well, the reason I called Brad and I were listening, and just as Mr. Twilight was going to disclose who the murderer was, I accidentally unplugged the radio. Yes, we missed the finish, and Brad and I haven't been able to sleep. Yeah, I know. Can I have a light there? <laughs> well, what was it about? Well, it started off, you see, in this huge mansion where this wealthy widow, Amelia Bancroft, lived. Mm -hmm. Where this wealthy widow, Amelia Bancroft, lived. Yeah, uh, she's the one that was done in. How? Well, uh, she was hit over the head with a bust of Beethoven. It was sort of a musical. <laughs> mm -hmm. And as I said, Mr. Twilight was just about to disclose who the murderer was when I accidentally unplugged the radio. We missed the finish, and Brad and I haven't been able to sleep since. Yes, it is an exciting story, isn't it? Well, there's no use bothering you about it, Betty. Good night, dear. Oh. Honey, you know, there's one thing I don't understand. What? Mr. Twilight is a half-hour program. How come it took you an hour to tell it to Betty? Well, I couldn't help building it up a little. Yeah, did you have to tell her the commercials, too? <laughs> come on, let's go to sleep. <laughs> oh, it's just no use, Brad. I, I couldn't. Oh, I can't. I'm tired. Brad. Hmm? If you were a policeman on night duty waiting for a crime, what would you do? I'd ask to be put on the day shift. No, seriously, what would you do? Play cards. What else? Listen to the radio. Yeah. Operator, give me the police. Joan, what are you doing? Hello, police department. Were you listening to the radio tonight? Joan, hang up. Well, there was this murder, see? Well, forget about the murder and hang up. What? Uh, 113 Elm Street. But that has nothing to do with it. What's the difference? Who killed her? She deserved to be killed for keeping me up half the night. Who? Uh, my husband. Well, this body was found. <laughs> Joan, if you want to look at the end. Go to sleep. Oh, no. Oh, can't be. What? Oh, three o'clock. 
o'clock in the morning. Oh, oh no. Who could it be? I don't know, dear. No. You just have company. Hello. Soft. This time, soft. Betty! Maybe it was Louie who killed Amelia Bancroft. Oh, oh, you too. No, Louie had an alibi. Well, how about the chauffeur? Yeah, will you go to bed, Betty? Maybe it was... Yes, 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 Betty. It could have been the nephew. He had a weak oh. chin. <laughs> Come on, let's go to bed. Honey, maybe if we reenacted the crime... No, no, i got to get some sleep. Yes, uh, listen. Now, you play Inspector Harrigan, and I'll be Amelia Bancroft. Uh, let's see. Now, uh, Inspector Harrigan was seated right here by a card table. He was playing clabiach with the uh, lawyer, Osgood. Yeah, it, it's your deal, honey. And uh, Miss Murgatroyd was at the open safe, and Amelia came gaily into the room. <laughs> Anyone for water polo? Suddenly, the lights went out. A knife came flashing through the air. Oop. Oop. Oh! <laughs> no. Uh, you be Amelia. I can figure it out better that way, I think, honey. Uh, Get right over here, uh, dear. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Now. Right here. Now, suddenly, the lights go on again. Ah! And Amelia's standing there, or lying there in a pool of blood. And, and Inspector Harrigan jumps to his feet and starts questioning everybody. Where were you? And where were you when the lights went out? <laughs> then the lights go out again. There's a knocking at the door. We got a report that a murder was committed in the... Joe, Joe, there's the body. Oh, that's no body. That's my husband. Yeah, it's funny. You see a million of them, but you never get used to it. Sorry to get you here. Yeah. No, he always looks like uh, that. Look, lady, please. When do you figure he got it? Well, from the way he looks, about six hours. <laughs> Cover him up. What do we do now? Well, we just have to wait for the coroner. Well, he better hurry. He's got to go to work in the morning. Now, lady, what was his name? Amelia. Uh, I mean, Inspector Her Bradley Ste I'm so confused. Brad, get up! Get up, honey. Get up, dear. Boy, that's what I call him. What are you trying to do? Idea. Make a fool out of the Now, get up, I'm going to tell you something. Sit over there. All right. I'm going to question you. There's something funny going on here. Let me go to sleep. Now, why did you call the police? She was gone. Oh, that's all right. Mistakes happen to the best of families. Yes, well, well I'm glad to meet you. Sorry, officer. That's right, right. all right. No doubt. No, we understand well, everything. Yes, goodbye. 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 Lovely boys, weren't they? Oh, yes, they are. After interminable questions, they finally cleared that one up. Oh, I'm awfully glad that the little one searched the whole house, though. You are? Yes, he found that left earring I lost four years ago. Honey, you oh, never believed Oh, come on, Joan. Let's go to bed. Joan. Let's try and get a little sleep before 7 o'clock, huh? 7 o'clock? Yeah, I set the alarm for 7 when we went to bed, which seems two days ago. Good night. Good night. sleep can do for you. I feel great. Just great. Joan. Come on, lazy bones. Get up. Meet the new day. <laughs> Joan, you only had one minute sleep. Huh? Yeah. I haven't even been asleep yet. The alarm went off one minute after we got into bed. One minute sleep? I only had one minute uh-huh. Oh, Brad, why'd you tell me now? I'll never get oh. through the day. Oh, no. Oh, what'll I do on the forum tonight? I, I won't know what to say. I'll just have to sit there like a bump on a log. Oh, it's such a pretty bump. Well, I don't want to be a pretty bump. I, I want you to be proud of me. I, I want people to say, ooh, that lucky Judge Stevens, to have a wife like that. She's so clever, she's so smart, she's so brilliant. She's, 
She's such a dope. You are not. I am so. You are not. I am so. You are not. I am so. <laughs> You're not, honey. It's just that you don't happen to know very much about a particular subject. And there's no reason you should know. It's not a subject you'd normally know much about unless you spent years studying it or spent some time amongst the criminal element. Spent time among them? Yeah, even, even then it's hard to find out how they think and feel because they don't talk very freely to outsiders. They don't, huh? No, they, they've, got to, they've got to trust you, you see, before they open up to you. They've got to feel that, well, that you're on their side, that you're sympathetic, that, uh, that you're one of them. One of them, huh? Thirteen up in the right hand corner. Okay, Tyke. You're on. Ah, you missed. Hey, you go, Rocky. <laughs> Thugs. Just blew in from shy. The uh, heat's on in shy. How to take it on the lamb from shy. Shy. That's short for Chicago, you know. Yeah, well. Hey. Pull well, any uh, interesting papers lately? No dames allowed in the recreation hall. Recreation hall. I could have sworn this joint was a pool room. Oh. A wise dame, huh? All right, sister. Whoa. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Like the yes happened. There you are, sir. You rock. Go on. Hey, boy. <laughs> Look, you can trust me. I'm one of you. I'm pulling little capers all the time. Spent half my life in these pool rooms. Snooker, rotation, spit in the ocean. <laughs> Had the cops on my neck all night. I honest, fellas, I'm one of you. Uh, would I be hanging out in these kind of places if I... Okay, sister, rack them up. Who, me? Here. Rack them up, boy. I spent many, many happy hours racking them up. I got in on my first big paper, see? And that's how I became a member of the Big Dutch's mob. I gotta tell you about that. Big Dutch comes up to me one day and he says, Babe, I want you to rub somebody down. I mean, out. Rack them up, I said. Yes, sir. Well, I spent many a happy hour racking them up. Land some of my biggest papers in them, too. Don't shoot it. Oh. This is for you. Break them. After you. Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, you missed. Uh, your turn, babe. Tell you, boys, excuse me. <clears throat> I will now shoot the eleven ball in the side pocket with a fourteen cushion bank in there. The hard way, of course. I still don't believe it. Impossible. You gotta show me that. Spread out, boys. Oh, 
So stolen jewels, the guns. Honey, I only did it for you. I wanted to learn about crime. Well, all right, Joni, but come on, let's hurry. We gotta be at the foreman, and now we have to get dressed. Good night, dear. Joni! Never. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to television's most popular forum, America Speaks. Our subject tonight is the need for alert citizenship in the fight against crime. And uh, we have among our distinguished guests tonight the eminent criminologist, Dr. Thaddeus Wartle, and his gracious wife, Mrs. Wartle, whose new book, Society and Crime, has just been published. And then we're happy to have the rising young jurist, Judge Bradley J. Stevens, and uh, his gracious and... Uh, Vivacious wife, Mrs. Stevens. <laughs> and now that you have met our panel for this evening, I would like to say how happy I am to have them. Because the subject tonight is one of uh, sufficient importance to merit such a panel. <laughs> their experience in their uh, respective fields can be of inestimable value in finding a solution to this far-reaching problem. <laughs> Judge Stevens, in his judicial capacity, is well equipped to give us the practical problem, whereas Dr. Wattle and Mrs. Wattle, of course, as educators, well, they can give us the uh, psychological motives. <laughs> And we start our panel with Judge Stevens, who in his capacity as judge has seen this problem at first hand. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one of the most serious problems today is crime. And just today in City Hall, I saw a shocking thing. It was a poster on the wall with a picture of three young supermarket thieves. Who is to blame? Frankly, I don't know. Yes, Mrs. Stevens? Uh, did you wish to say something? <laughs> Mrs. Stevens? Huh? Huh? Did you wish to say something? About what? <laughs> About the poster your husband saw, which said, wanted three young supermarket thieves. Oh, well, <laughs> I think it's a shame. Why should we have to advertise for young supermarket thieves? Why don't we give the old thieves a chance? But what's to become of them when they outlive their usefulness? Yes, uh, are they to be put on relief? Joan. I say, as Lincoln always says, equal opportunity for all. Joan. And furthermore, I... I... <laughs> well, uh, that is uh, one point of view. Did you wish to say something, Dr. Walker? Well, uh, speaking for myself, and I know I'm also speaking for Mrs. Wharton as well, uh, this is a subject that both she and I feel very strongly about. I think I can illustrate our attitude by telling you a little story. Now, some years ago, uh, uh, Mrs. Wartle and I, that is, I said that this is a small town in, in Pennsylvania, uh, we had an experience, uh, that is to say, it was quite a surprise. Indeed, it was very much of a surprise. According to the coroner, at the forum, 
I'm sorry, dear. I didn't mean to. So it's either you or name the person. All right. I know you didn't mean it. Girl. The man who killed Iris Standish was... (laughs) Maybe it was Harry who killed Iris Standish. No, Joan. No, No, Johnny, Johnny, you... Seen in tonight's cast were Ann Chafee, Tom Dugan, Jim Hayward, Jock George, Al Tiger, Jesse Simberg, Gil Fry, Nikki Stewart.